Hi everybody, my name is Clint Cap, and I'm doing a little series on vaporizers and vaping, uh, using a vaporizer to replace cigarette smoking, or at least reduce the amount of cigarettes that you smoke during the day in the interest of becoming a little bit healthier or causing less damage to your body. Please be aware of a few things as we go into this series. I'm not a professional reviewer. I'm not being sponsored by anyone or any company. I'm just a vaping enthusiast who likes to share my passion for things for the benefit of other people. If you're a longtime vapor or a kind of longtime vapor, you're probably going to find this video boring as hell and switch it off. No problem. It's okay. I don't care. But for people who are just looking into vaping as an alternative to cigarette smoking, be aware that it's a very, very broad field and there's as many opinions about vaporizer equipment and how to work with a vaporizer as there are individuals. This is a very individualistic activity and everybody's got an opinion and it's really up to you to look at what's out there. There are numerous, numerous videos on YouTube about using a vaporizer and vaping. See what makes sense to you and then go with that. Um, I'd like to begin with just a little bit of history of vaping and how it came to be. Uh, there's a few things about cigarette smoking that we know. One, you're burning a substance and inhaling the smoke. Okay, this is generally a bad idea. And the reason for that is that cigarette smoke primarily contains carbon monoxide which is a known toxin. Cigarette smoke also contains tar, which is an oily based substance that clogs up the alveoli or the small little oxygen trans receptors in the lungs. And then cigarette smoke also contains nicotine, which can be considered an addictive drug. The other shortcoming of cigarettes that's not commonly discussed is that the United States Food and Drug Administration does not require either the tobacco or the alcohol industry to give a list of the ingredients that are in their products. And it is known, or you can do the research, as to what chemical additives are put in common cigarettes by the major tobacco makers to make cigarettes more addictive. They want you to be hooked. And they have chemists that do their best job to make sure that when you run out of cigarettes, the first thing you're going to do is run to 7-Eleven and go buy another pack. And that's because of the chemical additives that are not disclosed in cigarettes that make cigarette smoking so powerfully addictive. The other thing to be aware of is that there is a physical, psychological, or psychosomatic component to cigarette smoking that becomes structuralized or habituated, which is the mouth, the hand-to-mouth gesture, the sensation of the smoke going down into the lungs, the feeling of fulfillment when you take a puff off a cigarette, and then also the satisfaction of exhaling the smoke, blowing smoke rings, whatever. So really there is a lot of addiction manufactured into cigarette smoking that you are not aware of, or maybe you're not aware of, that uh, the big tobacco companies aren't going to tell you about. So anyway, in vaping, there's no combustion process taking place. 
nothing is being burnt. We're working with a liquid, also known as juice or e-juice. We're working with a wire or coil, which is a very simple little device, a cotton wick, and when the cotton wire is heated, the cotton wick, which has absorbed the juice, gives off vapor, something like steam. And the ingredients on e-juices are listed. And you have the choice of using commercial e-juice, uh, which uses artificial flavoring, or you can search the internet and find e-juices that only use all natural ingredients. And so we'll also cover that in detail again in another chapter of the series on vaping. Um, I'd like to start out with a little bit of history just so you know where vaping came from, referring to my notes. Um, the earliest form of inhaling a vaporized nicotine product was first invented by an American man named Herbert A. Gilbert, and I'll include all the links for this stuff on the bottom of the video. He came up with a, a smokeless, non-tobacco flavored steam that did include nicotine, so he could inhale nicotine-saturated steam and replace the combustion and the smoke of a normal burning cigarette. He uh, applied for a, a U.S. patent back in 1965, so the idea of vaping is actually quite old. Um, not much happened out of that. Uh, there were herbal cigarettes which didn't contain tobacco. Some were good, some were not so good, and it kind of goes on and on and on. Moving forward to 2003, a Chinese pharmacist named Han Lik, L-I-K, again, I'll put up a link about this. He was a pharmacist and an inventor, and he came up with a piezoelectric, ultrasound device that was used to vaporize a pressurized jet or stream of nicotine impregnated water as an inhalant to replace his cigarette smoking. And he was awarded a patent back in 2003. So as you can tell, vaporizing hasn't been around for all that long. Um, but in the last, I would say, three years, the quality of the product, the satisfaction of vaping has improved exponentially. Um, I started vaping three years ago, and all you could get were these pen-like vaporizers, and it came with a mod. And a mod is a general term for any device which holds a battery and a firing button and a replaceable tank. And the amount of vapor that this mod and tank assembly produced, it was called an ego, was quite small. And the airflow through the tank uh, when you hit the firing button was also quite small. So it did, in fact, mimic puffing on a cigarette, but it wasn't a very satisfying experience. Plus, they were so cheaply made that the reliability was such a great factor that I wound up throwing them all in the trash. Let me just check my time real quick. Okay, so uh, I can only shoot 14 minutes, so I'll speed up a little bit. Meanwhile, the stuff back then was junk, but that's all we had to work with. And since that time, I threw it all away. I went back to smoking. I was a two-pack-a-day smoker, and uh, I really wanted to get off the cigarettes. Um, moving forward rapidly, um, I would say within the last four or five months, 
I got back into vaping again and was really happily surprised to see how far along the industry had come. The devices are much better built now. There is an absolutely gigantic selection of equipment. Um, there is a number of ways that you can work with a vaporizer. You can, you know, keep it really simple, which is what I suggest in the beginning. But the good news is because of the technology and the quality improvements, buying an inexpensive vaporizer these days will give you a much more pleasing um, experience of vaporizing enough so that it can be or has the potential to move you away from tobacco and that's the whole idea behind vaporizing so there's a little bit of history there's a little bit of what to expect i'll say very quickly it's a jungle out there on youtube there are so many personalities doing interviews and reviews and tutorials I take a mellow approach. I'm a very detail-oriented guy, so the subsequent videos that I produce will go into rather great detail so that you can appreciate what's involved in the equipment, how to take care of it well, how to use it well, and how to get the maximum enjoyment out of your vaping experience and find one day you've woken up and forgotten about cigarette smoking altogether. I have to admit that I still smoke, but I'm down to two or three cigarettes. Well, actually, no, three or four cigarettes a day. Nothing replaces a cigarette with coffee. And, uh, you know, that's just the way it goes. But to each their own. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this section of the video, and there's more to come. Again, my name's Clint Cap, and I'll be putting links that you can refer to at the bottom of the, the video page, okay? Take care for now. Vape on.